All right, so I have a feeling this is going to be quite the lengthy video here. So one of my patrons actually messaged me asking if I would do another tier list video because I have done a tier list video for the progressive uh, voices, <laughs> progressive media figures online before. It wasn't as fleshed out as this one is, so there's an F column in this one, whereas in the other one there wasn't an F. And then there are a couple more shows included in here. Um, shout out to a guy by the name of William who created this. I will, if I remember, I'll link it in the description. I always forget. But um, this is going to take a bit because we are going to be doing this. And there are some changes of opinions that I've had. A couple. A couple, that is. But before I jump into that, and I want to make this pretty quick, I am on Patreon. Patreon.com slash The Progressive Voice. Right now we have 94 patrons. And once we hit that goal that's on screen, I'm going to cut down ads significantly, basically down to like two max. Um, and you get early access to a bunch of videos because YouTube's been demonetizing a lot of my videos. This video on, you know, Sam Cedar that you guys probably saw, that was demonetized. You know, this one was demonetized. They demonetize almost all of my videos that I upload now. So I essentially put up early access for my patrons. And in addition to that, there are videos that are solely for patrons uh, completely. So make sure to go over there and check. Uh, make sure to go check that out. There's a ton of dope content over there. I do want to give a thank you to Jay Haskell, Rostafer Geller, Christian Garcia, Michael Smith, Wendy, Daniel, Unreal Trailers, Jonathan Espinal, Tamir Walton, Howdy Doody, uh, Michael Petkiss, JC Urbina, Taylor Clark, Sean Kennedy, Joseph Garrity, Film Oddities, and Miguel Maldonado. Those are all new patrons. So please do support over there. You get a bunch of benefits. Uh, so you're not just supporting me. You're getting a bunch of benefits. And then eventually we can cut down on all these damn ads that are on the videos, which will be really awesome because uh, I know no one likes those ads. Very annoying. So with that being said, let's go ahead and jump into this. That's patreon.com slash the progressive voice. Now, so to start out here, actually, what we're looking at is uh, we are actually going to start out with some of the mid-tier. Actually, we're going to start out with the low tier. That's what we're going to do because these are the very easy ones to do. Now, I'm having trouble spotting. The, okay, the Jimmy Dore Show is right here. Now, the Jimmy Dore Show for me is an F. Uh, Jimmy Dore is, as you guys know, my, my deep disdain for Jimmy Dore. You guys all know this. Uh, I think that Jimmy Dore is fundamentally stupid, and that really takes away from his commentary in general. He's also a man baby. He's essentially a baby, uh, a baby's brain inside of a man's body, essentially, is what he is. You know, he he supports Tulsi Gabbard over Bernie Sanders because Bernie Sanders won't come on his show. Anytime something like that happens to someone like that, immediately you can cross them off. Because to allow your political decisions to be influenced by petty emotional garbage like that is the most embarrassing thing whatsoever. You should take it like a champ. And still say that you support Bernie Sanders and that's your preferred candidate. Um, and the reason why he prefers Tulsi Gabbard in the first place is because, in contrast to Bernie, Tulsi went on his show. So very different there, right? Um, and again, he's very uninformed. He's very fundamentally dumb. His opinions on the 2016 election, when it came general election time, all of his predictions were completely wrong. He is a very dumb guy. He says it himself. He's a, you know... He calls himself a dumb late-night comedian, so he admits it. Um, but you guys know my disdain for Jimmy Dore. And in fact, someone told me that he's now using Jim Jordan clips. Jim Jordan we're talking about here to go on the offense against impeachment. So if that is true, and I haven't seen that, but that's what someone told me, Jimmy Dore has reached an entirely new low. And you really can't get worse than Jimmy Dore. I mean, the only way to get worse is to be Destiny, which is a pretty tough level. Uh, speaking of Destiny, we can throw Destiny in the F category. I have a deep disdain for Destiny as well, as you guys know. Destiny is somebody who I used to be a pretty big fan of. I really enjoyed his content. I thought he was really good um, at his debates, and he was a very cool dude to watch. Um, but ever since somewhere around April, March, April time of 2019, he started to go downhill. He had started to talk about how he thought workers were dumb, and he was not in favor of worker cooperatives, and... Uh, he started doing things like praising John Delaney and defending Mayor Pete and Kamala Harris and all of this kind of stuff. So, uh, and doing a lot of shady things in the process as well. So that's why I have Destiny and an F. Um, Destiny is also incredibly uninformed, just like Jimmy Dore. You guys saw the Michael Brooks video I did, hopefully. Uh, it's already almost at 30,000 views. I'm sure it's going to cross 30k at some point. 
uh, you know, he talks about stuff he's not informed about. He was doing videos about Evo Morales, the former president of Bolivia, and he didn't even know his name. He didn't know what his name was, similar to Dave Rubin and Bolsonaro. Um, in that Michael Brooks video, he has no clue about what Michael Brooks thinks, and he he alleges that Michael Brooks is a class reductionist, which is the craziest thing you can do if you personally are somebody who is uh, a viewer of Michael Brooks, because obviously he's not that. And the truth is, Destiny is simply a moron. And I hate the guy. I really hate him. He's Destiny is literally the worst that you can get, in terms of, like, if we're not including right-wingers, that is. But there's no bar lower than Destiny. I mean, that's horrible. Speaking of Fs, we can also throw in, uh, you know, Nico House in there, too. You know, Nico Loco House, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> Uh, Mikasa, uh, you know, Sukasa show, whatever the hell it's called. This guy is obviously a Tulsi sycophant. He's somebody who's completely blinded by his love for Tulsi. I'm also very concerned with his mental faculties, of course. He seems to be very out of it, similar to the way that you guys know my disdain for Destiny and Jimmy Dore. I also hate Nico House. I, ge I genuinely just seriously dislike the guy. Um, he's not a serious dude. He's, like, caught up in his love for Tulsi Gabbard. Why is he so you know, uh, convinced of Tulsi Gabbard and so stuck to her. It's like a, it's like when a little baby, like, attaches to the leg of, like, uh, their mom who's leaving, and they're like, no, don't leave. That's kind of what it's like. It's very weird. Um, he has no objectivity. He's gone to lengths to make up stuff, like saying that Birdie's Medicare for All wouldn't fully cover radiology like his, uh, TRICARE does. I hate the guy. I mean, this guy's pretty low. He's very low. Is he destiny destiny low? Nah, he's not that low. But he's really low, though. Same thing goes for Jamaro Thomas. Honestly, I'm not really sure why he's even listed here. He's so irrelevant. Nobody really cares about the guy. Don't know why he's here. But if you want to know why I don't like Jamaro Thomas, it's because every time I would make a video about Jimmy Dore, this guy would jump in and make a response video. It's almost like Jimmy Dore would like message the guy and be like, hey, can you make a response video about this because I don't want to do it. Um, and it was really weird. It's like... He's like his weird lap dog, you know. I, I coined it the JDDL, the Jimmy Dore Defense League. Um, it's basically just like smaller channels who idolize Jimmy Dore and is basically like Jimmy Dore is their father and they're like the kids and they can't have any disagreements. <laughs> and so that's why I really hate Jamal Thomas. He's the biggest tool on the entire planet. And quite frankly, I don't know why you would watch Jamal Thomas. I mean, honestly, his content is like watching ASMR. I mean, if, if you have insomnia, just put on some Jamal Thomas the dude takes half an hour to talk about a story that requires probably less than five minutes, and he's incredibly slow and spaced out. Um, but yeah, I don't know why you'd watch his content, because it sucks, but B, because he's just going to say what Jimmy Dore says, so what's the point? <laughs> I don't get it. Doesn't make sense. Doesn't make sense as to why you would do that, man. Now, when it comes to the F tier, uh, it looks like that's going to cover who goes into the F tier here. Um, now, when it comes to the D tier, um, I'm not precisely sure if I'd put anybody at the D tier. I'm going to put Tim Black at the C tier, um, although he's almost in the D tier. And I want to be clear that this is no shade at Tim Black. I, I'm actually, Tim Black is kind of growing on me as a commentator. But in the past, I've seen some qualities that I'm certainly not fond of. Uh, he seemed, back in the day, he used to seem to do these weird, like, faux masculine rants against TYT, and it was really cringy. It uh, seemed very contrived. Um, and just for me, the show is not really for me, personally. Uh, but that's no shade at Tim Black, though. He's actually, he actually seems like a pretty cool dude now. Uh, but I'm going to put him at C, and he's borderline D, but again, no shade towards Tim Black. I'm going to put Ben Dixon at C as well. He's also kind of close to the D category. And this is no shade at Ben Dixon either. I actually respect Ben Dixon. He's a cool dude and has some good commentary. I just don't... I'm also factoring in how much I watch the person's content, by the way. But Ben Dixon, his commentary is a bit lengthy, dragged out, and uh, and spaced out a little bit. And it kind of takes him a while uh, to sort of get to the point. But, um, you know, it's just... I don't really watch much of it, and it's not really for me personally, but still not bad, and there are a lot of people who listen to his, you know, podcast and everything, and I definitely respect uh, Ben Dixon, so there's no shade, no shade for me towards Ben Dixon. Um, then we are looking at, let's go ahead and throw the damage report I'm going to put at a B, you know, I don't really watch the damage report, 
But uh, it's some quality stuff. You know, it's John Iderolo with TYT uh, level of production. Um, it's pretty good stuff. You know, I always enjoyed watching John Iderolo back in the day on TYT's main show. Uh, damage Report is good. Uh, some people may have it at an A. If you watch the Damage Report, you'll probably have it at an A. I have it at a B because it's pretty good, but I don't really watch it very much. So I kind of have to put it at a B. Now, I'm going to start going a little bit all over the place here, although I'm going to put... I'll put Democracy Now... Oh, man, do I want to put Democracy Now at a B or an A? See, this is the tough one for me. I'm going to put Democracy Now at a B for now. And again, I want to repeat this, okay? Democracy Now can definitely go in the A category. If we're just looking straight by quality, Democracy Now is very, very high-tier, high-quality stuff, right? But I don't really watch it, so I don't think it's fair for me to put it at A. But it does deserve an A if you watch the show, but I don't really watch it. But it's very high quality, high tier stuff. So um, that's B tier for me. But I can understand if you put S or A. And if you put S, I wouldn't. Uh, I wouldn't be shocked at all. I definitely would not be shocked. Now uh, let's throw over. Let's do R O F Ring of Fire. This is Farron Cousins and I think Mike Papantonio and maybe some other guy too. Um, I don't really listen to R O F, but I do. Uh, I do like Farron Cousins, and it's a quality show, good commentary, uh, solid commentary, and uh, Farron Cousins, from my understanding, is a pretty, uh, he's a pretty seasoned vet when it comes to commentary, like, he's not new on the scene, Homeboy's been doing his stuff since, like, the early 2000s, so he's kind of an OG in that sense, but um, I vibe, I vibe with ROF and, and, and Farron Cousins, I just don't watch it very much, but it's quality stuff, so if you put it at A because that's what you watch, um, I would, I would totally understand that. I would definitely understand. It's definitely A-worthy. Um, no doubt. Now, <sighs> okay, the next one that I'm going to place here, I'm going to place the Michael Brooks show. The Michael Brooks show I'm going to put at an A. Uh, it has very good content, of course. I'm a big fan of Michael Brooks. Um, I do wish sometimes they would do some more lighthearted content as well. Um, and I understand that his thing is more the nitty-gritty of stuff, but some of the content, you know, like a lot of some... You know, there will be some, like, very specific stuff on African politics and African history and stuff like that. And that's cool and that's dope. Um, but some more lighthearted content would be cool, too. Um, that's not so nitty-gritty. Because it's... Out of all these channels, Michael Brooks is probably the most nitty-gritty. I mean, he'll have on, you know, a guy by the name of Milton Alamadi and, like, talk deep about, like, African politics. And it's just, like... It gets pretty deep. You know, history and just ge geopolitics. And it's just... It gets pretty deep. So if you're like a, if you're an avid watcher of Michael Brooks, you know you're getting all that good info. And you're learning a lot of stuff. Um, you know what I'm saying? So I, that's why I put him at an A. Um, but if you were to introduce some more like fun content, um, might have to raise him up to that S man. Might have to raise him up to that S tier. You know what I'm saying? Um, I'm also gonna put the majority report at A. Now I know a lot of people are gonna have both of these at S. Although I think most people will probably have. Mm, Michael Brooks will probably be at an A for most people, but some people put him at an S. Same thing goes for the Majority Report. Um, the Majority Report is a very high tier show. It's the most diverse left wing show that there is currently. Um, of course, because you know they have Sam, they have Jamie, etc., etc. So it's and Michael. Michael's a socialist. Jamie's even further left. I think she's a communist or socialist. And then Sam is more of a social democrat type of guy. So it's a pretty diverse spectrum. I also like that there's multiple voices on there. Obviously, Michael Brooks adds a lot to that show. Again, like I said, I'm a big fan of Michael Brooks. Sam Cedar kind of gets a little bit boring at times. His intros take a while. They're very spaced out, a lot of pauses. Um, and so that can be kind of tough to get through. Um, but, you know, usually the clips are sort of everyone chiming in. Um, but it's not an S tier simply because I don't know what it is. I haven't felt the connection with the majority report that I have with other S tier shows. So, um, that's why it's at an A for me. If I felt more of a, you know, connection to the channel, then, um, you know, it would certainly be, a, certainly be at an S. Um, I don't know why the Joe Rogan experience is on here. I'm actually not going to rate that because it doesn't really make sense to be here. Um, I'm going to throw the Rash Nash up at A as well. Some people are going to have Rash Nash as, as an S. Uh, he obviously has a very good channel. He, uh, you know, he covers the news. Um, in a very uh, concise way that a lot of people can, you know, have it delivered to them and really soak it in. And so, obviously, his content is very dope. He also will have 
some pretty uh, some pretty interesting videos from here and then. He's also a really cool dude. So shout out to uh, shout out to David Dole from the Rational National. Uh, he's definitely a tier. Same thing goes from Mike from the Humanist Report. He's also a really dope dude. Um, and he, you know, I've been watching Mike for a couple years now. Really, since 2016, that's when I first found his channel. Funny enough, I found his channel from. Uh, it was during the Bernie Sanders primary, and uh, I was just getting into politics. I was in maybe like three, four months into politics, and I had seen his video about the human rights campaign, the HRC, endorsing uh, Hillary Clinton over Bernie Sanders. And then, you know, they had to take down their ratings and everything because everyone was going to getting so pissed off about that. Uh, that was a great video by Mike back in the day. So uh, he makes good, informative content, of course. He also has some lighthearted content. And high-quality production, especially nowadays, man, that dude puts a ton of work into editing. I mean, this dude, I think it takes him, like, hours to edit videos. I'm talking hours. There's so many little edits and little cuts and little polishes. Man, that dude puts in a lot of work to his content, for sure. Absolutely, for sure. So he's A tier, for sure. Um, then we are going to toss up Kyle. I'm going to have to put Secular Talk as an S tier. I don't think I ever took out Kyle from the S tier zone. Um, I think I had him and David last time, but that's going to be a bit different this time. Um, Secular Talk is obviously always going to be S tier. What I will say is this. Um, although this is more of a general trend that I've been feeling, which is just this sort of lack of enthusiasm for... Uh, you know, any specific or really progressive media as a whole. Um, I don't know. Kyle's content has been getting a bit dry lately. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's getting a bit dry. It's like I've been watching that dude since 2016, as 2014, 2015, not 2014. Uh, since like 2015. And I've watched a ton of secular talk videos. Obviously, you guys can tell that I took a lot of inspiration from Kyle. His show and I felt a pretty deep-seated connection to that show and that channel and so it always kind of be S tier for me but I have to say that his content is definitely getting kind of dry I have to say I don't know it seems kind of it just seems a bit repetitive nothing really has changed up and everything and I'm just I don't know the flame is kind of gone man the flame is kind of out I mean for me I really thoroughly enjoyed Kyle's content when I first started watching and that was back in the days of uh, the primary starting to heat up, you know, the primary, Democratic primary starting. Again, that's about when I started getting into politics, like a few months before that. And, you know, watching his videos covering uh, George W. Bush and all those super interesting uh, stories, like, you know, that Bush had a memo given to him that bin Laden was basically planning something but didn't do anything. And his video on Ted Cruz and that hilarious uh, bacon ad where he's, like, cooking it <laughs> on his rifle... Um, yeah, you know, those are really the OG videos that I really, uh, really vibe with. But um, the flame is kind of running out a little bit. So I think Kyle needs to do something to switch it up a little bit. What I don't understand is why Kyle has never had any guests in studio. Like, I get it if you don't want to make that a regular thing. I understand that. But you're not even going to have it once. You have a, a really nice studio. You're not even going to do it as like a celebratory thing or like a fun thing or like a spice it up thing. Like, the thing about these shows, man, everyone's got to do stuff to spice it up. Because this is a daily grind, man. This stuff gets tedious and just repetitive. But uh, I don't know. Like, he's in New York. Michael Brooks and the entire Majority Report team is in New York. Um, other progressive commentators visit New York, I'm sure. Like, Jimmy Dore was in New York, I believe. Uh, or was that L.A. where Kyle was on his show? I'm not sure. I forgot. But, uh, yeah, so... He needs to switch some stuff up a little bit. He needs, to, he needs to find a way to spice up his content because it's getting a bit stale. That's what I have to. That's what I feel. It's just kind of repetitive, you know? Um, but he's still S tier, of course. But I would like to see, like, you know, having some guests in studio. That would be really litty. Um, and just some fun content, you know what I'm saying? That would, be, uh, that would be really dope. But he is S tier, and he's actually going to be the only S tier channel for me, personally. Uh, the other ones don't make the hump to S over A. Um, and, uh, you know, that's the only S. The previously, I had the David Pakman show at S. But, and you guys, you guys may be a bit shocked by this. I'm actually going to put David Pakman as C tier. Now, now that I said that, I'm actually contemplating whether or not I want to put David Pakman as C tier or B tier. <sighs> this is a bit tough, you know what I'm saying? Because C may be a little bit harsh. I mean, I almost had put him at a D, but... 
I don't know, you know, I think I'm going to have to put him at a C uh, because that's just really reflective of my opinion of the David Pakman show right now. Um, as you guys know, I was a big fan of the David Pakman show. I actually first, I had started watching the David Pakman show very late. Um, and that was already after Trump had been elected. I had first started watching him, but there was something about his content that I found really interesting. I really enjoyed the thorough diversity of content that he would have. He wouldn't just talk about politics. He would talk about other random stuff, which I found really interesting. Um, and having Pat as a producer, you know, losing Pat off of the show definitely made the David Pakman show take a hit because it's not as interesting with just David speaking. Um, I also kind of miss the uh, the way that they would have the... Uh, I don't know what the way is that they put up, like, quotes and stuff on the screen, but, you know, when they even when they used to do video switches, it would be like the screen that says David Pakman show, but you can still hear the audio of like David and Pat talking. So I miss that a lot, Uh, but it definitely took some hits. And then really what really drove this down is all of his recent shenanigans that he's been pulling because I have no other way to call this but shenanigans because when you starting out with, you know, taking that money from the, you know, the Koch brothers to debate. So just to be clear, he did do it debating the person. But I still think, like, you know, taking blood money is incredibly, you know, unethical. And I think it says a lot about him. Um, But, you know, it's not just that. You know, he joined Jordan Peterson's Think Spot and then dipped when he realized it wasn't going to be a profitable venture and that it was a dumb idea, which is kind of like, okay, why didn't you see that coming before? (laughs) Like, what's wrong with you, dude? What's wrong with your head? And then he's already been doing these shady ad runs with this super shady Bitcoin company where they have, like, these really weirdo weirdos come on and look like the weirdest people ever and they're just like oh thank you for having me they're shilling their bitcoin or whatever it is you know and those videos definitely have bots on them liking the videos and viewing the videos those probably come from that shady bitcoin company um and the medicare for all videos will really drill that into the hole and don't forget about the ilhan omar video and his video on bolivia and all this other stuff it's just too much man it's just too much you know what i'm saying like I'm one straw away from unsubscribing from David Pakman, dude. One more mess up, okay, and I'm unsubscribing completely because his channel has now just been full throttle MSNBC where it's just videos of, uh, (laughs) just videos of, like, Donald Trump made fun of by NATO leaders. (laughs) Ha ha ha, what a moron. (laughs) Look at this guy. It's just, it's it's indistinguishable from MSNBC. Let's keep it real. But he's going to keep doing it because he probably likes that content. But more importantly... The Trump administration has greatly benefited the David Pakman show. The David Pakman show would be nowhere near what it is right now without the Trump administration. His Trump videos explode on a daily basis. So, that's the problem. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But that Medicare for All video really was the nail in the coffin. Um, and so, I could place him as a B maybe. I may be a little bit too harsh here. But... As of right now, I'm very angry, so (laughs) I'm going to put him at a C. And he could arguably be a D as well. Uh, But just just consider this a reflection of my feeling currently and my anger towards the David Pakman show right now. And the next time I do a tier list, you know, we'll see how I feel because I'm sure I'm going to do this again. (sighs) Now we have Rising. I'm going to put Rising as a B. A lot of you guys really love Rising. I don't really watch Rising just because there's already so many, uh, you know, progressive media outlets. I don't need to add a whole entire another one. Um, and, it, you know, it's cool. It's got good production value. It's got some good stuff. Um, I do like Crystal Ball. Um, and so it's a cool show. So I have it at a B. A lot of people are going to have it at an A. Some may even have it at an S. But I predict most people are going to have it at an at a, a. Uh, a lot of you guys really, really love, uh, <laughs> really, really love, uh, you know, The Rising. But uh, then, you know, we've got Rebel Headquarters. Now, when it comes to, you know, RHQ or whatever, I think it's RHQ. Um, when it comes to this, I'm sort of, I'm going to put it at a B because it's good content. But just be aware that I don't watch, you know, Rebel HQ. I don't watch it. But I know it's good content. I used to watch it when it was TYT Politics with Jordan Sheridan um, before he started having orgies with his employees. Um, and then he was gone, <laughs> then they took him out, but, uh, it used to have really good content on TOT Politics, but, uh, this is, uh, good content as well, but just be aware that I don't watch it very much, and so I was tempted to put it at a C, but I'm gonna put it at a B, I'm gonna put it at a B. Now, what I don't know is why this seems to be flipped. Now, what I'm gonna do is, 
Um, I'm going to treat the Jank Uger icon. I'm actually going to treat that as TYT because I don't know why that's not TYT, but TYT I'm going to place at like a B, I'm going to say is like a B tier. Um, now, the thing about TYT is, um, you know, I think when it, when it comes to TYT, the thing about this is for me is like this, okay? If you were to ask me, like, okay, you know, I just provided you some pretty detailed critiques of all the people that I don't fuck with. or descriptions of my opinions on everyone. <sighs> when it comes to TYT, like, if you were to ask me, like, hey, like, you know, what could they do better? I genuinely don't know. I seriously don't know. I don't know what TYT could do better. It's just B tier for me. Um, and it just is that way. Now, for most people, this is how it was for me. TYT was a gateway. TYT was a gateway for me. I first started watching politics, progressive politics, because of TYT. That's what I first found. Then I switched over to secular talk, and I kind of never looked back. Um, and so, you know, I really enjoyed those days of, like, Ben Mankiewicz and Jank Uger and John Iderola and Anna Kasparian and Jimmy Dore. Those were really good shows, and I enjoyed those. But it's kind of, it lost its flame for me personally. It definitely lost its flame for me. Um, so it's at, it's at a B is what I'd have to say. But it, I don't really have any critiques that I could give it to like be like, you know, oh, this is how you could become an S tier. I generally don't know what they could do better, honestly. I, I, I quite frankly just, uh, I quite frankly just don't know. I don't know what else they could do. <laughs> but uh, for me, that's definitely going to be, uh, for me, that's definitely going to be B tier. Now, we got Anna Kasparian's No Filter. I'm also going to place this as an A. Um, there's definitely somewhere between a B and an A. Um, I do like Anna's show a lot because she has, you know, these critiques of, uh, you know, these big figures, of course, uh, videos notably on Jordan Peterson and, and Dave, Dave Rubin that are pretty well sort of written out, thought out critiques. And I think they're well delivered in those videos also. Uh, she has some pretty cool guests on. Obviously, she had me as one of them, but she's also had, you know, David Dole and Michael Brooks and has some pretty good guests on there. And so it's a pretty cool show. And the vibe you get from No Filter is uh, it's pretty cool, actually. I kind of I kind of vibe with it. So I, I put that at A tier. Then um, I'm not going to rate Lee Camp because I like Lee Camp from what I've seen. But the truth is, I don't watch uh, things called Redacted Tonight or so. I don't know if he's still on RT or where he is now. I don't even know. But uh, I don't watch Lee Camp, so I'm not going to rate him because obviously I don't watch him. I'm also not going to rate Joe Rogan because I don't even know why he's here. <laughs> and then I'm not going to rate myself either. But I have to tell you that when it comes to Hassan Piker and rating Hassan Piker, um, the thing is, is he's a little bit unorthodox in this scenario, and that's because... He's a streamer. Now, Destiny's also a streamer, but Destiny is clearly an F because he's horrible, right? Um, but Hassan Piker is a streamer, so the only thing he uploads to his YouTube channel are clips. Most of the time, those clips are not about politics. Most of the time, they're about other stuff, random stuff. Um, and, you know, I, th I think I had put him at a D before, which is, you know, that before was an F. So keep that in mind. The D was the bottom. Now the F is the bottom. So... A D right now in this is not a D before, right? You see what I'm saying? So, um, I think I would put, <clears throat> I think I'm going to put Hassan Piker as a C. Um, so, he's going to be in this tier. The reason why I say that is because, and this is no shade, obviously, but um, I think that, you know, he, he does less political content now, although he still does some. He does, like, a lot of react streaming of random videos from different uh, Twitch streamers and just plays videos and just sits there. Sometimes he plays a video and just leaves uh, to go, like, you know, do something and then comes back, like, five, ten minutes later as the video is just playing in the background. I don't know. It just seems a little bit lazy. Um, and, you know, he has he has a lot of these anger outbursts, which are understandable because he's under a lot of stress and pressure. So I do understand why he would be having those outbreaks. But it's just not really uh, in terms of the political stuff the best i would say but it's also not the worst um and his streams are actually pretty f pretty fun to watch and to interact with they are actually pretty enjoyable but um his political insights are also uh too hyperbolic for me and i don't agree with his policy positions obviously i mean the dude's basically a full-on marxist so i'm obviously not a marxist <laughs> you know what i'm saying i'm basically bernie sanders so I don't agree with his positions either. 
Um, and so when you combine all of that stuff, he comes out to about a C. You know, I'm not trying to be too harsh or anything, um, and no shade to Hassan or anything like that. I'm just trying to give an honest uh, opinion here. Um, I have him at like a C. You know, if for him to rise, you know, he would have to do more, I guess, uh, uploads to YouTube that are, you know, strictly political or maybe make specific YouTube videos that are not just cut out clips from his streams. Um, and he would just have to be more interesting politically is what I would say. But for the most part, he seems to do a lot of, uh, a lot of react content, sort of unrelated stuff. But, um, and he finds himself in a lot of controversies as well, which some of these other people aren't, you know, foreign to either, but he certainly always finds himself in, and the biggest thing I think is just the, the anger problem. He just blows up way too much. Um, and it gets a bit, uh, almost becomes like a, a show that you're watching or something. But, you know, it's not terrible. It's pretty good. Uh, but I have to put that at C level. So with that being said, this is my official tier list as of December 12th, 2019. Um, I'm sure I'm going to do this again, <laughs> of course. But uh, we've got in the F category, we've got Jimmy Dore, Destiny, Nico Casa, and Jamal Thomas. Again, don't know why Jamal Thomas is included. He's incredibly irrelevant. Nobody cares about the guy. C tier, I've got Tim Black, Ben Dixon, David Pakman, and Hassan Piker. B tier, I've got Damage Report, Democracy Now!, Ring of Fire, Rising, uh, Rebel Headquarters, and TYT. And then A tier, I've got The Michael Brooks Show, The Majority Report, Rash Nash, Human Support, and No Filter. And then at S, <laughs> that's a really funny uh, icon, by the way, I've got Secular Talk. So I will try my hardest not to forget to leave the link to this in the description box. Um, obviously, comment me your things. Also, tweet at me on Twitter with a screenshot of your... Uh, you know, of your tier list because I'm very curious to hear them. So, uh, hope you guys did enjoy. Uh, let me know your thoughts down below. I'm awaiting a lot of controversy.